Hi, my friend, and welcome to this new episode. Today, we're going to talk about how to tame the fear of hunger. Let's go. Here are the three benefits of taming the sphere of hunger. First, we get used to our body sensations like hunger. And then we have access to experimenting with a personalized food plan, right? And we get closer to our health or body goals, whatever it is. I've got clients who have very different body goals, health goals, and that's okay. But we get closer to them if we tame the fear of hunger. Let's see how to do that. But first of all, let me uh, tell you why I'm qualified to speak about this. My name is Nadej Cezana. I go by Nan and I'm a certified life and weight loss coach, also called the Cravings Coach. I'm a former binge eater. I used to snack for 30 years and now I have the privilege of helping coaches eat what they said they would eat with zero fear of having extras to get stronger than ever, which is the best feeling ever, if you know it. And here's what a um, oh, um, client of mine came up with as a challenge this past week. Her goal was to prepare her own food plan so that she would be healthier, she would be stronger, she would look but also feel so much better. That was the plan. But when she was thinking of the plan, she was thinking, but I could get hungry. And because she believed that she could get hungry, she was feeling fear. And that fear she was feeling because she was thinking I could get hungry was making her worry. She was imagining the worst case scenario, unbearable hunger, like starvation. She didn't write a food plan then, she was forgetting everything about her goal to feel better, healthier, stronger. She was not even remembering that it was not the first time that she had felt hunger and that she had survived, actually. But she was not also brainstorming to find a solution in case she felt hungry. And when she was behaving this way, you know, imagining the worst case scenario, not writing a food plan, not coming up with different strategies. As a result, she was actually preventing herself from reaching the health and body goals that she also wanted, right? What a bit, isn't it? But what I want you to know is that she was not preventing herself from reaching her health and body goals because of that goal. It doesn't make any sense. Right, but everything was coming from that thought here, I could get hungry. That was what was what the problem was. Because that thought, I could get hungry, was actually preventing herself from reaching her health and body goal. And it's interesting because the circumstances, the goal, for instance, that she had for herself, cannot make us feel any emotion, right? So she was not feeling afraid because of that goal of preparing a food plan or being stronger, looking good, feeling good. No, it doesn't make any sense if we think of it. But she was feeling fear because she was thinking, I could get hungry. And what's interesting is that our thoughts create our emotions because she was choosing to believe I could get hungry and seeing it as a problem. Then of course she was feeling afraid, right? I could get hungry was making her feel afraid. And her circumstances, in that case, a goal to have a food plan, to follow the food plan, to get the benefits of the food plan, was not what was driving her hack action. Doesn't make any sense either, right? Because she was not writing the food plan, so she couldn't follow the food plan. But it was not because she had a food plan or because she was thinking of a food plan. It's because she was thinking, I could get hungry and seeing it as a problem. That was creating the fear. That was what was preventing her from having a food plan and following the food plan. So all thoughts drive all actions, right? So if she was worrying, it's because she was thinking, I could get hungry. And that was a problem for her. So all circumstances can produce our results. So if she was not creating the body, the health, the looking good, the feeling good that she wanted, it's not because she had that goal. Again, it doesn't make any sense but she was not creating this health and body that she wanted because 
that thought, that belief, I could get hungry, was standing in our way, right? Our thoughts produce our results. So she was preventing herself from reaching her health and body goals because she believed deeply that she could get hungry. And that was a problem for her. So I came up with three questions to help her move forward. The first one is, what's wrong with having a sensation, feeling hungry, right? Yes, it's true. Although she didn't have to think about it all the time. It's true that she could get hungry with a food plan, but also without a food plan, right? The food plan is not what's going to create the hunger. Hunger is the sensation that we get as human beings and other um, living creatures get it too. I know my cat for sure has this sensation of hunger. And it's not technically a problem. Basically, when we're hungry, it means that our, our body needs fuel. So it's actually a sign, a cue coming from our body saying, hey, <laughs> need fuel. It's just like the gauge in the car signaling, you know, we need fuel, we need more fuel. Nothing's gone wrong. But we see it as a problem, especially maybe in our society where we want instant gratification, where food is available everywhere. So maybe we've made it a bit more difficult for us to be patient. When we have this signal hunger, we reach for the food immediately because we've made this sensation unbearable, as if it was unbearable, as if it was a problem. And that's why my client was feeling afraid of being hungry. So I asked her a second question. How could this fear of feeling hungry be actually an opportunity? And maybe, as we talked about, maybe it was actually an opportunity to reconnect with an emotion, this feeling of fear. And maybe again, we tend not to want to feel afraid because we don't like this discomfort. We don't like feeling afraid. So maybe that's why we don't stay with the fear. We don't stay with the hunger and we immediately solve the sensation of hunger, the, the emotion of fear by reaching out for the food immediately right? And the third question was, why could this sensation, feeling hungry, be actually a good thing, right? Why could it be actually a good thing for her, an opportunity for her? Maybe it's actually that she gets more comfortable being uncomfortable. So we came up with three thoughts that helped her and that could potentially help you, or at least that's my desire, my intention. The first one was, I'm doing it right. If I'm feeling hungry, then it means I choose to make it mean that I'm doing it right. Why am I doing it right? So she came up with different ex explanation why she was doing it right if she was feeling hungry. The first one was, I'm allowing my body to use its resources. She wanted to lose fat when she was feeling hungry and not immediately solving the sensation of hunger with whatever was within her reach as far as food was concerned, maybe junk food, maybe comfort food. If she was telling herself, I'm allowing my body to use its resources, then she was allowing her body to solve this hunger with you know, taking fuel from the fat stores that she had on her body, which was actually perfect because that's what she wanted. She wanted to get leaner, she wanted to get slimmer, right? She wanted to get rid of the fat rolls on her body. So maybe it was a good thing that she allowed her body to do so, to reach for the freezer maybe, rather than serve immediate food immediately, instantly. And also she came up with this idea that maybe she was getting more comfortable with the discomfort of a sensation, hunger, and also an emotion, fear, right? So maybe those thoughts can help you also stay more comfortable, become more comfortable with the sensation of hunger, right? And maybe you've got other ideas and please share them with me if you'd like to with my email address being nscoaching at outlook.fr. And maybe you want to take it further. Maybe you want help customized to your specific needs, your specific challenges. Maybe it's hunger, maybe it's something else and your particular food plan so that you read your goal, which is of course unique to you. If that is you, then of course, apply to my coaching program, which is called Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good, right? Because 
Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good is the only one-to-one -one online coaching program for coaches just like you who want to finally follow their food plans with no force or deprivation, that feeling of hunger, starvation that we could have, so that they get the health and the body that they want. If this is you, well, please apply. Because imagine the results you're going to get. Imagine no longer going from an extreme, obsessing about your food plan to the other, completely ignoring it and binging on all your favorite foods. Imagine that that's no longer an issue for you. Imagine no longer feeling really bad in your body, heavy, bloated, sluggish, you know, that sensation when we've eaten too much. And imagine also no longer feeling terrible about yourself, ashamed, regretful, guilty when you've overeaten. Imagine also no longer hiding from your clients out of fear they might find out the ugly truth about you, that you're not doing what you should know, so you think, how to do, right? But instead, I want you to imagine, knowing without the shadow of a doubt that you'll go back on track, not next Monday, not next month, not, not next month, but immediately after eating a slice of pizza and feeling so empowered, so proud of yourself, so accomplished, more accomplished than ever, in doing so. Imagine feeling so good in your body, light, energized, as if you were invincible, right? Imagine feeling super proud of showing off the result you've created for yourself, your body in your cute new clothes, maybe on social media, whenever you can. And also imagine the relationship you're going to have with your clients. For instance, during coaching sessions, being so much more present, so much more focused on what's happening for them, so that your coaching is also, of course, so much better. Imagine you're so confident that you magnetize new clients. Your clients know that you are a product of your product. It shows in the way you speak with them, right? They feel this newly found confidence, and of course, they want to be in your in your vibe, they want more of this. They want the same for themselves. So of course they come to you. And so the way you show up in your marketing is completely different from what it used to be when you just wanted to hide and be forgotten and really not have to answer questions that could be embarrassing for you. But instead now you feel certain that those coaching tools, they work. They work for you, they work for your people. You don't worry anymore. You don't question yourself. You don't doubt. You know for certain. So, of course, your clients want to stay in your vibe. So they renew. And of course, they send people to you. You get referrals. And we know the result of all this. You've got a prosperous coaching business. You make more money. And it's a virtuous circle because you get to show up more and more and you get to help more and more people, which is really what we want, isn't it? So here are the two steps of Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good, this coaching program. The first one is to build that trust, that self-trust, that yes, you have a food plan and you can follow your food plan, right? This is what we focus on first. And also, of course, I call it this, the other side of the coin, we understand why you also want extra food so that then we can decrease this desire for the food and then it's so much easier for you to decline the food easily, right? So those are the two steps, saying yes to you, your food plan, your health goal. And on the other side, it's saying no, and not in a mean way, but in a kind and logical way, saying no to the extra food by simply reducing this desire that you have for the extra food. So Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good is a three-month, online program with sessions that last 30 minutes. They're private coaching calls. You have 12 within the three months. And in between the sessions, because we know that, of course, you're going to need support in between sessions, you have unlimited written or audio, depending on what you prefer, audio or written coaching in between the sessions, Monday through Friday, right? This coaching program Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good is accessible to you for 3,000 euros if you decide to pay in full 
or three payments of 1,100 euros, which is, with this payment plan, 3,300 euros. So what's your next step? Well, your next step, your next best step is to book your free Crave Control consultation call. We want to find out, right, what's really stopping you from eating what you said you would eat and from being the best possible version of yourself in the best possible health. And it's probably not what you think. You might be surprised. We also want to have a clear blueprint, one that would be customized to your needs so that you reach your health and body goals no matter what, okay? We want to know what standing in your way and create an action plan. And of course, I'm going to answer all your questions about working with me. And if you want to book this consult, all you need to do, super simple, is scan this QR code or access the, the, the link that it will be posted below this video. I want to thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your trust. And of course, if you want to reach out to me, you've got all the necessary details below this, this video. Thank you again. And I wish you the best dealing with hunger, not seeing it as a problem anymore and finding strategies for you to deal with that. So that, of course, undoubtedly, you know, you have, you reach your body and health goal. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Bye.